Welcome, this is an IGET concept module. It's focused on Landsat 8, talking about the digit lumber to top of atmospheric reflectance for your OLI data, and the brightness temperatures for the tier sensors. It's part one of part of a two-part concept module. Be sure and look at part two to see the um, exact equations that can be used. Also, there is one uh, for the same correction for Landsat 5 and 8 out on YouTube. This uh, focuses on correcting those digital numbers for two different types of sensors that are on the Landsat 8 satellite system. One is called Operational Land Manage Imager. It's OLI. These sensors we're going to correct for top of atmosphere reflections for the bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9. The other one is the thermal inference sensor, uh, co commonly called TIERS, and we're going to look at brightness temperatures in Kelvin for bands 10 and 11. Included in this uh, concept module are some background science concepts and reasoning for making this uh, correction. I just want to remind you that part two includes the exact equations for both of these corrections. Landsat 8 is a passive remote sensing system, and it, it needs energy, an energy source, in order to be activated. And that energy source is our sun. The sun provides the energy, the solar irradiance, so I'm going to be using this graphic to just show uh, schematically that the sun the atmosphere, the Earth, and features on the Earth, as well as the top of the atmosphere, and you'll see TOA quite frequently, and the sensor itself, the sensor platform. There are five interactions that are possible when solar irradiance energy interacts with objects on the Earth or in the Earth's atmosphere. One of these is called transmitted. It's transmitted through the uh, atmosphere. It can then be absorbed by the particles within the atmosphere or on the surface of the Earth. It can be scattered by molecules within the atmosphere or the Earth's surface. And it can be reflected by objects on the Earth. Solar radiance can also be re-emitted as heat. So not only is it a reflective, it can be re-emitted as thermal energy. We're going to really be looking at the two sensors for Landsat 8, the OLI and TIER sensors, and looking at those bands that collect the wavelengths of reflected energy or the thermal energy on the TIER system. When we look at images coming in from Landsat, uh, they're, they're in shades of gray, okay, either almost white to black. Um, the data coming in for each of the wavelengths is converted to a scaled digital number and then displayed as this brightness for each pix pixel. Brightness and the digital numbers are scaled differently for different Landsat missions. So Landsat 5 and 7 use a scaled digital number between the values of 0 and 255. The values of both 0 and 255 are reserved to fill gaps in the data. Landsat 8 uses scale digital values of 0 to 4,095, but those values are actually rescaled to 55,000 grade levels. One thing to remember, and it's important, the higher the digital number, the brighter the pixel. This is actually showing an illustration of this using band 4 brightness in digital numbers. So here we have our Landsat scene, and we're looking at an area in that Landsat scene uh, for band 4, if we zoom in, you can see that it, it's pretty much sure that this is a building in this scene. If we zoom in so we can see the pixels are 30 by 30 meter pixels, and then we can see the digital number if we convert from the grayscale to, to values of, of numbers. So all of the data is coming in as brightness values, scaled to different factors, and each of the different wavelengths, 1 through 7 and 9, come in in these three scale brightness pictures. 
In order to visualize them, the computer, using three um, guns, using are displayed the different three bands that you want to visualize as either under the red gun, the green gun, or the blue gun. So it takes those grayscales and, and colorizes them, combines them, and does what's called a composite image. The top one on the right, they've been bands have been combined so that we see what appears to be natural color, like a photograph. But oftentimes it's better to combine three bands that we can't easily visualize to get more detail. This, these are two other illustrations called false color or pseudo color, but by combining bands that we don't normally visualize. Digital numbers are based on the solar irradiance energy on the date of collection, and they're unitless. These numbers, as I've said, are scaled and do not represent energy levels. They're just scaled values. One of the things that affects the uh, incoming solar irradiance is the Earth's sun geometry. That is the distance of the Earth from the sun and the angle of incidence of the solar irradiance. In astronomy, the distance between the sun and the Earth, the average distance, which is 90, about 93 million miles, is called an astronomical unit. I want to caution you that this graphic is not to scale. The sun and the Earth sizes and the orbits it, are not to scale. So schematically, here's the sun and the Earth in two positions. One of the positions is January. The other position is in July. And you'll notice that we are closest to the sun in January, less than one astronomical unit. We are furthest from the sun in July, a little bit more than one astronomical unit. So why is it colder in the northern hemisphere even though the Earth is closer to the sun? Well, I want to give you a hint. The, the arrows here indicate the position of the poles of the Earth on its axis of rotation. So the Earth is tilted on its axis. Back to tilted to 23.439 degrees off of perpendicular. So the sun's rays in January come in at an angle to the Earth. So the sun's rays in July come in perpendicular to the surface of the Earth in July. Think of it this way. What if you have a flashlight and the energy from its bulb is shining? and you take that flashlight and you tilt it at an angle to a wall. You can see the area that the flashlight light is most concentrated is spread out. If you take the same flashlight and put it perpendicular to the wall, you can see the area in which is illuminated by the intense light bulb. You can see that if you are angled in, the energy you have is spread out over a much larger area than if you're perpendicular, and this is exactly what happens with the Earth. The angle that your uh, the sun's rays are coming through are spread out if it's coming in at an angle, or are concentrated if it's coming in perpendicular. Also, you can note that we're actually going through more of the Earth's atmosphere when it is at an angle. Imagery data that that we collect should be corrected when images are used that use different dates. And this is important for a lot of different applications, such as land use change over a period of time. You may be looking at J June in 2090, uh, 2000, and uh, say 2010. If you collect them on different days of the month, you should change and correct for the angle of incidence. Pre and post fire events often collect data right before a fire maybe immediately after the fire, and then several months or years after the fire to see what changes occurred, these should be corrected. If you're going to mosaic different images together, you may be taking them from different paths and rows that would probably be collected on different dates, they should be corrected. Also, if you're going to use the thermal bands and you want to compare temperatures of features in different images, you should correct to make sure that you're looking truly at solar irradiance and not some other factor. Software is used to make these corrections. 
and they're different for different Landsat missions. Uh, there is another YouTube video out there for Landsat 5 and 7 corrections. There are also two exercises out on the iGET webpage that show how to use the corrections in Landsat 5 for Arcus using ArcGIS 10.2 and for Lanza 8 using ArcGIS 10.3. One thing I want to stress too is their Lanza 8 has two different instrument packages. One of them is this Operational Land Imager or OLI and the other is the Thermal Infrared Sensors uh, for bands 10 and, and 11. So first I want to talk about the OLI bands. What's interesting is the OLI uh, digital number data is corrected for top of atmospheric radiance as part of the pre-processing before it's uh, put out on the web for downloading. The data does not need to be corrected then for the top of atmosphere. It does need to be corrected though for the top of atmospheric reflectance of sun angles. The two equations used uh, in step one, the digital numbers are changed to values that can have energy values. And in step two, the values are corrected to account for the difference of the Earth-Sun's geometry. For the tiers or thermal bands, it's also a two-step process, but it is not corrected uh, before it's uh, put out on the web for top of atmospheric radius. So it needs to be in step one corrected and changed to an energy unit. And then those values from step one are converted to the at satellite brightness temperature in degrees, degrees Kelvin using an equation adjusting for thermal constant. Part two of this uh, will show you the, the ex exact equations that need to be used and give you more uh, information on the steps to correct both the OLI and the tier sensor data. This is in part two of two for the same exact uh, YouTube video and I just want to remind you about the two exercises that are available. These are the references for the, that were used uh, for this and I want to thank uh, USGS for a lot of help in defining exactly which of their equations to use the uh, the product using Landsat 8 using the product uh, was used, but it was also a lot of uh, assistance from USGS. You might want to pause here and read these questions and see if you can answer them. I am going to present each of the questions and their answers in the next step. So pause it now and then look at each answer and pause as you go through. Thank you.